Hello, and welcome to another episode of Intune.Training, the place to learn how to use Microsoft Intune, the Steve and Adam Show. Hey, I'm Steve. Hey, I'm Adam. Wait, we got that wrong somehow. Oh, wait, I'm Adam. That's yeah, and not Steve. <laughs> that's not Steve, no. Uh, hi, I'm Ben. I work with Steve. Steve's, uh, Steve's currently sleeping in my office, and uh, he uh, wanted me to sort of help out a little bit with this. So. Here I am. He's uh, currently being the producer of this uh, of this episode. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, so let's. Uh, I'll take a moment to introduce Ben. So Ben is uh, this is Ben Reader. Uh, he works with Stephen, and they together create this amazing dynamic duo of uh, automation for Intune. And um, so Ben is on um, on Twitter. He's powers uh, underscore hell is that right that is correct yeah uh and i have all the other social medias github and all that sort of stuff we'll we'll put them up somewhere i'm sure yep yep um, we'll put them in the video description so uh so we're bringing ben in uh we've been trying to make this happen for a little bit and um ben has got some just amazing um coding background and uh we're gonna start trying to do some more videos around uh okay so now we've shown you how to do it in the gui but Let's talk about how to do it practically from an automation perspective. And so that's that's kind of how we're starting. And so today we're going to uh, be kind of revisiting a, um, a topic that we've already covered a little bit of running PowerShell scripts from the Intune portal. And so I'm going to turn it over to Ben and let him kind of walk us through this. Excellent. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so as you said, um, a couple of weeks ago, you guys put up a uh, post on uh, just deploying PowerShell through Intune, um, and and you know the the many myriad of benefits that you uh, that you get from doing that. Um, which I mean, to summarize, if it's not currently available in the GUI in Intune natively, and you know that you want to do it, you can do it through PowerShell, which is fantastic. Um, but I, I I watched the I watched the blog. It was fantastic. Um, and I just noticed that there was a bunch of things I really wanted to like. I wanted to be there while you were doing it because there's so much that I do on this on a daily basis um, that I really I, I just wanted to jump in and help out. Um, so what we're going to do, we're really going to just really quickly rehash um, the basics of deploying a script through Intune. Um, but what I want to talk about specifically is um, why you guys should be uh, logging in your code. Um, specifically around uh, Intune, because if you're doing complex uh, scripts, Intune doesn't natively have any logging for those scripts. Um, and I just want to show you right now why we should be doing that. OK, um, so I'm going to create a script that's intentionally going to fail. Um, I probably should say that it should be perfect and then let it fail, uh, to keep in line with the, uh, the Intune training ethos. Uh, but <laughs> but we we're going to we're going to say openly that this is going to fail. I'm not throwing any shade on you guys. You're fantastic. Okay. <laughs> Speaking the truth in love. That's fine. It's exactly fine. exactly. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna set up a couple of uh, variables. We it, this is not going to be a complex script. Um, so we'll just do a region block config um, client. While he's name. typing that, uh, we I think in our pre previous video uh, the. The code was, you know, new item, and it, we created a new folder off the root of the C drive. Basic, but um, at the end of that video, you can see where we ran into an issue where it, um, we we mistakenly thought that we could rerun the script if we wanted to, and we discovered that we couldn't. And um, so, hopefully, at the end of this, we can maybe talk a little bit about. Um, the ways that we can rerun scripts as well. So now what we'll find here, and I believe this is the truth here, uh, is that if the script fails, um, then it will re attempt to rerun actively, but uh, Intune will at least know about the failure and allow that script to continue to re retry until it succeeds. But once it succeeds, it doesn't rerun. It never is, that's correct. Something else on the back end. So we don't have to go down that tra trail yet, but. Um, just buying you some air while you type there. Yeah, for sure. I think that'll be that'll be a, that'll be a good subject matter for another another uh, talk. Um, the other thing to note as well, um, uh, I'm going to stop typing while I'm talking about this, um, is that uh, if the script fails, it will attempt three more times um, natively. Uh, that is that is a hard limit. Um, if 
you get really geeky, you can change that. Um, but by default, it will only try three times. So if your script fails three times, it's never going to try again. Um, the idea here is that if it's if it's bad, you need to catch on and, and fix it. Um, and there are a couple of ways that you can force it to rerun. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll get into that. Excellent. Okay, so we're going to create a folder. Path will be C drive program data client name. So we're going to create a folder in uh, C drive program data called uh, Intune Training, and we're just going to dump a uh, dump a text file in there, um, which is a very boring but very important example. Uh, okay, getting close. New item path is example path. It's amazing watching someone who actually knows how to write code write it. Uh, I can <laughs> I can produce the same stuff, but not with the same efficiency. Uh, I it's all VS Code. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's yeah, but you know how to use it. So we're, all we're doing here is we're just going, if this if this folder doesn't exist, let's create it. Um, I'm putting this in my logging. I've got a very big question mark here because uh, we're not actually doing any logging. Um, but you know, I'm just I'm used to doing it the same way. You're just going to rely on that. Okay. I'm going to put this in a try catch statement, and we can talk a little bit more around why uh, uh, why you should be used. Uh, it sh should. Autocomplete's not going to work. That's fine. Okay. So what we're going to do in our try uh, statement a, uh, a a text file um, is going to be called. Um, this should be here. Txt, and we're going to go. Uh, new item uh, item path will be example path txt file item type is file false and we're going pipe that out any of that and then then going to go okay so what, what this is doing is it's creating this file and then going to do some logic to validate whether that file exists but what i'm going to do is i'm going to stuff it up so that it intentionally fails so if test path uh, let's go example And I'm just I'm doing the opposite of that. So if this doesn't exist, we're going to throw file doesn't exist. You cooked it. Do a couple of other things here. Silently continue. <clears throat> Else return true. Throw statement is going to uh, essentially bomb out of the script, but because we were in a try catch statement, um, it's it's just going to handle that. Um, so we were about it as well. So we're also going to throw from here. And go now, ahead. the way I understand a, a, that a throw works is essentially you are inside a a block um, and and to the next, to whatever it's, it's nested inside of. So if you've got a function and you throw from the function, it throws it to the calling process so if you had a section and you call the function then it would you could catch the function all like you, you could throw them all out chain and and have all your logging that's correct and you can have quite uh you can have quite uh deep uh you can have a try catch inside a try catch um and it, it's basically the catch is only going to or the, the thing that's thrown to it um or, or that's errored out um in its nest so uh, yeah, you can get very complex, and uh, it, it on its own is something that we can talk about, but it's, uh, maybe a little more advanced than we need to get into. Um, but okay, so we're gonna go. 
Okay. So what this should in theory do uh, is it's going to create this, uh, this file um, and then we're going to do a test path against that. Um, let's, let's actually do it this way. This uh, sum of file.txt. All right, so what we're looking for is, is this should be here.txt. Um, however, we're going to create a file called sum file.txt. So the naming will fail. Um, and this is going to bomb out. So, let's, and we're going to go, go to our uh, our Intune portal. Going to go into device configuration, PowerShell scripts, and we already have one from the last time you guys call it this failing example. Location. Now, if this was me, I would be testing it inside of code or what you know before I spent the effort of uploading it into into you know, make a code change and then load it into into. <laughs> but I, I get what was just hurry up and get to the failures so we can then go from there. But um, we can we can we can definitely run it. Um, let's um, all right. Okay, so that's failed. So the uh, the file doesn't exist. You cooked it. Uh, has been thrown to the catch statement, which has also thrown it. So it's sort of a double double negative, um, but we can see that the the error has happened. Um, and if I quickly go to uh, program data in tune training, so you can see the folder has been created and that text file some file.txt is there. Um, so this script is done on what we want um, and our test has uh, failed on purpose. Um, so let's cool. let's deploy it to your virtual machine uh, that you've definitely got spun up. Yes. Yes, excellent. Um, all right, let me just find this. Training example. Um, we are going to run it as system. That's fine. I'm going to run it in 64-bit. I strongly recommend, unless you absolutely need to, um, this should always be set to yes. Because what 64 bit machine should be running on, on YouTube? Um, all right. Let's go select groups. Oh, you what, have been watching our videos. Good job. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, what security group should we deploy this to? I think we've got one the uh, Intune baseline. Uh, and that's then devices. Intune baseline. I right. License. Hmm? License. All right. We'll deploy to license because. Oh, that's mean, users. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. I actually had an interesting discussion where someone was uh, recommending that it should be deployed to devices the other day. Um, I don't know. Yes. Okay. Okay. So we're going to add that. Um, and now, if possible, I'll get you to take over, and we'll have a look at your virtual machine and All see right. what's going on. So here we go. Let's see if this works. So we're going to open up the company, I assume. And we're going to sync it. Yep. Is that the tram going by? It is, yes. Yeah, sorry. Nice. We're in Melbourne. It, uh, it gets noisy. Well, now I'm at the Microsoft Store. That's neat. Well, and and as is as is the case, we are probably going to run into some technical difficulties. So this is a 1909 um, VM that I just spun up, and um, seems to be confused as to whether or not the company portal is installed. There okay. we go. So there are a couple of ways that uh, this process up. The most default way is going to the company portal and uh, forcing it sync. Um, the other way is to actually open up uh, the uh, services and Ooh, service. restart the management service, um, which That's is a highly, uh, yeah, only for the IT pros watching. So it's uh, just a Microsoft 
It's all Microsoft soft yeah. in tune management. In -tune all right. Management. Yep. So we just, just yeah, either stop, start, or restart. Same process. Um, this is essentially mimicking rebooting your computer or logging off and logging back on. Um, so if we can just go to the Explorer uh, and go into program data, yeah, and we'll just wait and see if that Intune uh, Intune dot training fo folder gets created. And I was going to go to the. Um... I was because I don't know how to navigate this stuff. Totally. The uh, come on, little machine, <laughs> you can do it. I think it's uh, this one, and then this, and this one, all the way here, and then we can do a sync here as well. So this at least tells us we our last successful was Excellent. a bit ago. So we'll probably just give that a shot. That we've we've done this in the um, company portal, and we've seen that when you sync in the company portal, it doesn't uh, set in there. So you could sync it here, but um, it generally doesn't show you the the uh, that it's done. And so I, I like I like doing it here just because you can see. That it's working. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see. Hey, look, it, it has already run. There we go. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, so we can see that some files there. Um, and if we, we were to wait long enough, um, and long enough is, you know, 15 to 20 minutes, um, that error notice would come back up to the portal and we could see that it has failed. What the, the process of attempting uh, uh, to reattempt is every hour. Um, unless uh, every time the device polls, uh, it will attempt to run this again another two times. After the third time, it will just go, I don't know, it continues to fail and it will give up. Um, that is where uh, you as an IT professional needs to go in and try and figure out why the script that you've deployed to the uh, client devices isn't working. But that's kind of all you get. Um, there, is, there is some sort of deep diving that you can go into the registry to see it's failed. Um, there's a couple of uh, event logs that you can look to that basically show you that the script has failed, but it doesn't tell you why the script has failed. Um, so that gets me to the meat of, uh, of, of sort of why I'm... If you're, if you're deploying complex or custom PowerShell scripts via Intune, you need to make sure that you're writing scripts that log exactly what's happening so that you can troubleshoot and so that your support team uh, can identify exactly what's gone wrong. So in this scenario, we know what's gone wrong, um, but because there's no logging, um, we just need to know it because we wrote it. Um, so if we go back and we uh, to just put in some very basic logging, uh, I can show you, uh, I can show you sort of how I do it on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'll, I'll take. All right. So here we have our magical script um, that we that we looked at before. Now in our logging, I'm going to add. Sorry, I'm just going to get rid of the thing here. Thank you, Stephen. Our producer is amazing. All right, so I'm going to add a couple of things in. So what I'm what I'm doing here is I'm just going to create a variable called log file that is uh, going to be the, the name of the of app name dot log. Could be it doesn't matter, but for for the inner SCCM nerd to keep things correct. All right. So underneath here, what I'm going to do is say start transcript. Uh, start transcript. What what this is going to do is as soon as this runs, all output uh, of the PowerShell script or the PowerShell process is going to be output to the log file. Um, the benefit here is that you don't need to write. In. This will just output everything. So you don't need to over overthink this. Okay, so we're just going to force that to start running. What I'm going to do at the end here is I'm just going to put in, so we've got our try and catch 
statement, um, I'm going to put in a finally block. Um, what this essentially means is that no matter what happens at the end of the process, um, we're going to finally wrap things up. Um, and I'm actually going to put this into. And, and so just for educational purpose here, the, the try catch basically tries your catch is we want to catch an exception and not proceed past that. But then after the catch does what it's going to do, if you have a failure, the finally lets you take action or process outside of that main loop is that accurate that's yeah that's correct so the finally is sort of like I'll, I'll use it in a way that it's I'm cleaning up uh, my environment before I finish the script so regardless of the output of uh, or you know the, the success of my script um, I want to handle that myself um, because I, I want full control over exactly what happens um, so in this scenario what we're doing is we're throwing that error into our catch statement um, instead of bomb neatly, we're getting the error Error, we're storing it in an error variable and then dependently uh, have a populated error variable, we're going to then do some things. So in, in our finally statement, we're just saying if, if there is an error variable or if there's content in that, um, we're going to uh, write host um, something went wrong. We're going to stop transcript. <coughs> it would be good if my autocomplete finished, but it's not going to, so I'll just do it myself. Stop transcript, and then we're going to finally throw. Uh, and the only reason I'm throwing is because what that does is it exits the uh, the script uh, so that the, uh, uh, so it reports back to Intune that there was a failure. Um, uh, it would exit with a zero, um, and that will essentially tell Intune that it finished the way it was supposed to. So we still want to actually bomb out. Um, and finally, we're going to go if uh, otherwise or else, uh, we're going to say right host, everything is good. And we're going to stop. Oh, there it is. There. So I'm going to go back into here. Now let's actually just quickly see if we've got that reporting on that. No, it hasn't come up yet. I'm sure if I refreshed, oh no, here it is. So weirdly it's come up under device status. And if we were to have the time, we could actually watch this last updated uh, keep coming through and I would do it three times. Um, but we're just gonna delete this script. We're gonna redeploy it and we're gonna see the output uh, that, we're, that we're now expecting. Then what's the significance of doing the delete versus just edit? The script. Um, so if you so the scenario that I was talking about, um, where a script will only run uh, three times, if you edit it and it's already run three times, it's not going to uh, reattempt. Um, and when you create a new uh, a new script policy, um, what it's actually doing is it's also creating a completely new and unique uh, entry in Intune, um, which. Again, I'm kind of hoping that we have another conversation around around that, but it, it creates its unique entry with a unique GUID um, that we can then tr track and monitor in the registry, um, which is quite quite deep and nerdy, but we can sort of get into control and force a rerun if it's failed three times. Um, so I just like, I'd, I'd like to delete and start again, essentially. If I know for a fact that the code has failed, um, let's just get rid of it and let's start again. Good to know. Cool. Um, so we're going to do failing script two. Uh, while I'm doing this, can you please delete that uh, intune.training folder? Yes, I certainly can. Uh, done and done. Excellent. All right, so same same deal here. We're not, we're not changing anything at all. Um, I've changed the name of it just so that we know, um, but we're going to make sure that the script runs is, um, and we're going to force it to run in 64-bit. Select groups. Now here's a good one for you. So, well, yeah, go, go ahead and do all that. Um, yep. So you could do all this remotely to this machine as well. You could kick off the, at least do the sync from the portal here, right? 
Yep, 100%. Uh, we can do that as well. Um, let's give that a go. All right. So, so I guess the reason I'm so uh, for years I have preached the idea that from your desk to work on a client's machine, you're doing it wrong um, because you should be able to do everything remotely from your desk. Uh, and even the idea that uh, so many people feel like, oh, I've got to log into the user's machine to do the thing. Uh, you got to stop thinking like that. It, this, yeah. so, so being able to do it um, remotely and then being able to watch the status or you could remote, you could have a remote connection to the hard drive and watch or into the event logs, everything you can do from sitting in front of the machine, you could do remotely. And I, I like that functionality. I like being um, from this portal. So that's going to be the second one there. The second one. Mind. Okay. Great. Yeah. Um, and, and so anyway, that, I think that's, that's a, if we're, we're talking about automation, you know, the whole beauty of automation is you don't have to, to manually do things. And for the sake of the demo, we're logging in to see it exactly. easier. But when you're doing this practically in your environment, you have many ways as possible to not have to physically log in or physically visit a machine to be able to. Yeah, that's a that's a really, really good point. Um, all right, so I'm going to force a sync from the portal. Um, so, and I mean, I, I think we've just shown in this in this uh, session alone that there's about five different ways that you can force a stink on on a device, which is <laughs> yeah, which is really good. Um, yeah. So the nerd in me likes killing the service. Um, the the user uh, front end is fantastic for for people to self serve their own device, um, and then obviously from here we can do it as well, which is great. And I suspect um, there's even some some cool PowerShell y things. Yes, you could do. there is. Uh, yeah, so you can you can hit this sync from from graph basically, um, which what that means is that you can do uh, you can scale this out. So if you uh, if you have all your devices in specific groups. Uh, and you're deploying a script and you need it done immediately, uh, you can hit graph, force a sync of as many devices as you want, um, and then just sit and wait and watch them catch on fire because you're coded. Uh, so yeah, it's it's completely scalable and and, and programmatic. Um, all right, so we'll just switch over to your machine if we can. That should be coming through. Thank you. And let's see what we get here. See if it's uh, showing sync. It has synced and don't have a folder yet. We'll give it a second. Um, I've owned in these scenarios, um, if you're rapidly developing solutions and you're testing them, that the quickest way to force a, a repoll or a resync uh, is to drop the service. Um, but again, I, I, I only recommend it while you're developing your solutions. Um, it should not be the, the scenario where you go up to your uh, your end user's machine and you get into the services. It's it's shouldn't shouldn't be your relied upon solution. I agree. Uh, so where did you where was the path that you put the log? Was it in the same place? Uh, C drive program data, yeah, engine training. It'll okay. it'll it's the exact same solution. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I'll just give this a second. Yeah, and from a you know coming from a config manager environment and and things, the I feel like this is the the back end black boxness of all of this is the piece that is is probably the biggest um, learning curve slash um, maybe even roadblock for, for adoption of just it's too hard or the sorry I'm not. Uh, the impression, I think, is that it's too hard or it's impossible to um, see behind the scenes enough to replace what we do today with Intune. Uh, I don't think that that's necessarily completely true, but I, it's, I think that they've moved the cheese, and we have to figure out where the cheese is now. Uh, yeah, I completely agree. And that was one of the primary reasons why um, I started developing my own method of logging uh, all of these scripts that we were doing again as you said there was just there was this black box mentality where i was just supposed to accept that it failed and not know anything else um but in the same scenario was true in sccm where if you're doing remediation scripts for example um 
it's only going to tell you whether a pass or failed. It's not going to tell you why it failed. Um, so it's just a, it's a mindset that you need to understand that if you're writing custom code, you need to rely on your side that logging. Yes, definitely. Um, and I was, while you were writing the log there, I was double checking in here to see, um, if this was, if this had logged anything, um, to these locations. So I don't know if you don't know the, this is just in the default in the event viewer. Our shell stuff gets logged here and you talk about data security and things like that and oh make sure you don't embed things into your uh and yeah. this is this is part of that reason why because things get logged here so here you, this is yes it worked i was hoping we'd see so yeah, cool. i can see that that the script that got copied down actually and um you know, that's, oh, and actually, that's, go go to that uh, the event that you were just showing that showed the script ran. I just want uh... <laughs> yeah, where did it go? I don't know what happened to it, but you can see where it's yeah. Look, see, it's doing. We can. I'm pointing at the screen like you can see it. See me pointing <laughs> at it. Uh, the uh, yeah, it's doing the the. You can see where it's all the different commands that it's writing. For yeah, that's perfect. Scripts. And which is and now I, I turned on advanced stuff and turned on the analytic and debug logs here to be able to see this stuff. But um, let me start from the top and go back down then. It seemed a faster way to get here. There it is. There it is. Okay, so I just want everyone to pay attention to the name of the script that is run um, and, and we'll go back to that in a second. Um, but yeah, as you can see, if you've got those analytics, uh, it's it's really in depth. All right, so the the script is run. My log file hasn't been created. Maybe you should put some logging around the logging. Yeah, maybe I should. I know why I didn't. Uh, it'll probably be in because a... you're on Intune.training. That's why. Uh, no, I didn't create the example path. All right. Oh, we were doing so well. We were had to had to bomb out. Log file. Example. Sorry, I'm going to rapidly change this and redeploy it. This won't take long. I love a bit of dead air too. Uh, the, while you're doing now, the the this debug logging stuff is really great. So from if you're still working in Config Manager, if you've messed with uh, CM Pivot or the Run Scripts option in the console, uh, I found this to be for debugging those things. So if, uh, specifically, uh, Ben, you mentioned a minute ago about remediation scripts for configuration baselines and, and things like that. So if you're running those, if you don't have logging, it can also come in to the uh, logs here and at least see that there's that your script ran and you can typically see a lot of the content that gets exported from those as well so um it's a great little spot to yeah uh, okay okay so i've just uh i've just made the change to that logging uh, i've redeployed it out okay um so we'll just if you can force the sync on your machine go Excellent, thank you. Uh, and if you can also delete that. Ah, actually, no, let's not delete that folder. Right. Oh, sweet, excellent. That's all good. And so I think the, you know, from from my perspective, it's this is putting putting the the puzzle pieces together, finding the breadcrumbs, finding the, you know, how do we find how do we track the pieces, and so. So we know that we can come here and we can sync, and we know that we can look in the portal and we can see the errors. We know that we can look at the client and we can see if the scripts ran or not. Um, and so, so now I can work my way down the path to getting to the the result of saying, okay, so did did my folder get created? Well, no, it didn't. Um, that's correct. So I think that's it's nice to follow that trail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. No, we just wait. We got hold music. 
Maybe Stephen can hum for us or something. <laughs> He's over here nodding. He's a yeah, consummate professional. He's uh, uh, sitting quietly and being patient. Yeah, the best one on our video feed. That's not... <laughs> Watch out, Steven. I'm putting you on camera now. Oh, and you, <laughs> <laughs> you straightened up. Uh, this is not the first time <laughs> he's done this. Aha, there okay, we go. It's folder. Look at that. Woo! Fantastic. Didn't fail. All right. So, what I wanted to really go into, uh, and the, the primary reason of this is that the power of doing start transcript, uh, it's, it's two lines of code. Code, start transcript and stop transcript at the at the tail end at the top and tail of your code gives you all of this information and this level of depth uh, that so if your you know first and second level support guys are saying that a uh, script has failed get them to give you that log and you can tell everything about the script that's run so if we start from the start we can see a a, a timestamp underneath that we can see the you shows immediately that the script was run a system. That's very important because the amount of times that I've uh, written a script, deployed it as user accidentally, that it needs to be a system and it's failed or vice versa, um, having start transcript really helps narrow down exactly uh, you know, what context it was run in so that I can find out what I've done wrong. Um, the other, the other uh, line there that's really, really important that Adam was showing is that, um, so what this is actually showing is the command that was run to trigger the script um, and again if we go back to if we remember looking at in the event log um, that will marry up or it would have with the previous uh, yeah that, that's that's correct yeah if i get it to reloading the logs for me here first oh there we go there they are in reverse order that's neat why would you do that <laughs> that explains why they weren't showing up with the, no it just it doesn't want to sort them in reverse don't know why anyway uh no logic, we, logic. you guys saw it it was a thing we saw it there uh let's go check it out see if there's anything there what there's nothing here there's i nothing can't just there. go rewind manually are you sure exactly yeah no hidden item was turned on everything it doesn't stay so when it's when it's uh when it's triggered it uh uh, it downloads the content, uh, it runs it, and it immediately uh, kills it and deletes it from your machine. Yes, um, the just back re referencing back config manager. Same thing with CM Pivot. Same thing with uh, run scripts. Same concept. It has a temporary location, copies the file down. It has it hashed. It dumps it there um, and runs it, and then deletes it and clears it off. So, same kind of deal. I like it. That's it. Um, so I. Basically, the, the takeaway that I hope that everyone gets from this is that if you aren't currently uh, doing start transcript with your with your PowerShell scripts that you're deploying to your client machines, uh, doing it now um, because there's very little overhead uh, and the level of diagnostic data that you get back is is absolutely fantastic and very deep uh, and will help you uh, get out of a sticky situation every time. Now, um, I, I, the without getting getting too deep into it. I, I have used start, uh, this transcript many, many times. And I found that, I guess the, the best way to describe it is if you are debugging when you're you know, looking at it in the console as it's, as it's outputting, um, if you don't see it in the output in your console when you debug it, it's also not going to show in the output in your transcript. So the transcript is only logging things that would normally display into the console if you were sitting there writing the command in the script manually. Is that, that is, accurate? Is, yeah, that's that's one hundred percent correct. So you can see, obviously, when we ran it on our machine, you know, the big wall of red um, saying that something failed, um, but that doesn't actually get technically output to the console, uh, so that doesn't show up here um, because we handled the error that happened. Uh, and we actually sent it through program in a programmatic way. Um, we output that in a, a, a throw statement and we got that error, um, but it's only going to handle, uh, you know, like write output or write host or things like that. Spit out the, the output of a variable, you would, you would call that variable and things like that. So you just need to uh, write your code in a, in a debug kind of way so that anything that you actually want to see 
uh, to uh, put that into your code. Yeah, and I, I like that. And so for me recently, I was um, here. I'll, I'll see if I can. I'm not going to write nearly as fast and fancy as you, but uh, so I've, I wrote a function that's a debug version of, of uh, you know, you've got a debug variable. And so it's just uh, function log and oh, almost. It's not VS Code, so it's not going to autocomplete. <laughs> and then so if I had a param of uh, debug, and if I set that to true, that doesn't, yeah, that works. Um, and then you just do if debug. And actually, you would end up a param as well. Yeah. And so then in your function, you you would call it uh, later on. Yeah. Too many. I'm used to VS Code now. I can't even write <laughs> in this. Yeah, it's making, it's making me lazy too. It's gross. Um, and so then I would just do a log low. And if I run that, I've got debug set to true, and it output hello. But if I've got debug set to false, it won't output it. Yeah, um, exactly. And so, so that's the you know same kind of deal. And so, so then, looking at this, you could you could shorten all your write host just to a, a log uh, function like this, but only make it work if debug is on or off, and you don't have to wrap each individual write host in in a if d you know because this would be the longhand way of normally doing it, where you'd only want to output that that text whenever and yeah anyway. I think you get the idea. Yeah, no, that's that's good. That's good. Um, I'm I'm very much enjoying this. Excellent. Well, uh, uh, Ben, thank you for being on. Uh, do you have anything else? I, I don't want to cut you no, off. No, look, I more. think I think like I've I've got a million things that we could talk about, but a good uh, starting uh, sort of thing here, just to, just around why it's important that you log um, as. A said I'm like I'll, I'll keep saying it it's to understand that if you're doing custom PowerShell you're in charge of logging if you don't do it you won't know and you won't know why it failed it's it's that simple um, and it's it's not hard to implement this stuff so I really think we need to uh, we need to start leveling up our, our script being taken seriously when we're doing this sort of stuff and one really good tip is um, go, go cheat go steal people's code from, uh, go to github Go to anybody's blogs. Go take code that other people heard and use that as a starting point. If you don't know how to do it, go find great examples. You don't necessarily even have to go, you know, post on a forum and wait for somebody to give you an answer. Go dig around. If you exactly. see a, if you or if you get someone's code and there's a, a function or a thing that's happening in there that you don't that doesn't take, you know, take the function name and go and search for it in GitHub or or and Google Bing, Bing, whatever, uh, and <laughs> go look. <laughs> yeah, whatever. They're not sponsored. Uh, so, but uh, that's what I mean. That's one of the things I do. Like, if I've got a DLL that's referenced in a thing, and I'm trying to figure out the syntax, I will go search for that DLL in GitHub and get it and how someone else is using it and how somebody else is interacting with it. And uh, God, I'm really trying to keep a straight face. Way to go, Stephen. <laughs> Uh, He's being the consumer professional producer. Yes. Yeah. He, anyway, so don't don't kill yourself trying to do this. There is a ton of resource out there, and you can just you know take someone else's code and custom your own. The idea here is that if you think about what we're doing in, in automating things, the reason why we're writing code so that we can do things faster and more efficiently and in a more repeatable fashion. If that's really the case, then Automate your automation creation process. Go to start. You know, like exactly. don't don't write it from scratch. Get, don't get reinvent there as the wheel. As possible. No one, no one's going to judge you on how 
how you got there. Just get there as quickly as possible, as effectively as possible. That's exactly. at least my kind of philosophy. No, I, I completely mean, don't agree. Don't really steal, steal stuff, but you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's anyway, cool. well, thank you, Ben. This was this was very enjoyable. I'm looking forward to more of these sessions. Hopefully, we can um, get our schedules all synced up to be able to to work some more of these in. Um, and we're gonna, you know, start just kind of diving in deeper on all of this. Uh, this in tune stuff and so glad to have you as part of the team thanks for having me and and bye steven bye steven all right uh and uh, so yeah the twittery thing i'm uh, at adam gross tx on social media and you got ben uh, it, uh, powers underscore hell and that's my twitter yep yep and we'll have all the um other bits and pieces in the description of the video so thanks for joining us and be sure to subscribe. We're releasing a video roughly every, you know, two Monday night, Tuesday ish, depending on what time zone you're in. We're shooting for it anyway. Sometimes I forget. So uh, anyway, thank you guys for your support and come back and see us.